Hey y'all, I'm going to be talking about three books today, all of them by Suzanne Young. Um, I literally just closed the treatment after finishing it and came straight to do this book review. So in like the last week, I think, I don't remember when I started, I read um, Suzanne Young's book, Hotel The Hotel Ruby. Is it The? No, it's just Hotel Ruby. Sorry. And then I read The Program, followed by its sequel, The Treatment. And... Um, I had wanted to read the program and the treatment for a while now. I first saw them at Powell's Bookstore in Portland, Oregon, and I was really intrigued. Um, and finally, I was able to like track them down at the library. And I read Hotel Ruby first because that was the one available, and then they became available. So anyway, I have not read all of them by her um, because she's also written... Um, I'm blanking on names. She's written... Uh, the recovery and the remedy and things like that and I don't know if I'm going to keep reading and Here's why I had the same problems with all three of her books So obviously the program and the treatment go hand in hand and Hotel Ruby is a completely different thing. It's a standalone It's its own little thing, right? Um, also warning this video is going to be full of spoilers. I'm gonna be using names talking about the plot so if you don't want that don't listen <laughs> um so first I'm going to start with Hotel Ruby. I was reading through it and I kept feeling like I had missed this big old chunk. Like of course there's mysteries and there's supposed to be suspense and whatever and the reader, it's kind of your job to figure it out before it's revealed, right? But there was so much like confusion I guess that it really did feel like I had missed a whole chunk of the story when I was carefully reading every single page. Um, Obviously, again, I knew that something was up and that there was this mystery to be solved, but it was the entire mystery was kept in the dark for too long. Um, ideally, a good author lets pieces come so that the reader can piece it together before the protagonist does, right? Nothing was coming. There were no pieces being revealed. I was prob... I don't remember how far along in the book I was. I was at a certain point, probably not yet halfway, but well into it, and I went... They're all zombies. And I even stood up and I walked to my husband and I held the book in his face and he was busy doing other stuff. And I was like, they're all zombies. I don't want a zombie book. And then I walked back out and I did keep reading and I read the whole thing. And yeah, they were kind of all zombies. So I figured it out, but it was because it, but I didn't figure out the whole mystery behind it. She wasn't giving clues to that. Um, and then when the whole thing did reveal itself, it continued to feel like there was this key component that was just not there. Um, it kind of just, you finished with this sense of, okay, like, I don't think it was done as well as it could have been. Um, and I also had zero connection with the characters. Zero. There was nothing. So now, going off that point of no connection, I'm going to talk about the treatment and the pro the program and the treatment. Sorry, I should say them in the order that they're published, but since I just finished reading the treatment, it's like on my brain, right? Same thing. I just read two whole novels. Let's see. The treatment was over 300 pages, and I'm going to check the program. I'm pretty sure it's the same. Program is 405, and treatment is... 344. Okay? I just read hundreds and hundreds of pages about a girl named Sloan and her boyfriend James and their friends. I have no connection. I feel nothing for Sloan. I felt rage at the program that they, that the people who are part of the program thought it was okay to erase memories and reset people. That's not okay. But I felt nothing for the key characters that you're supposed to develop a relationship with. There was nothing. Sloan would start crying and it, literally in my brain I was like, stop, suck it up. Like you have no re, and she had plenty of reasons to be crying, but there was no feeling in the reactions she had. Does that make sense? Um, Suzanne Young is a, apparently a New York Times bestseller. I don't know a lot about her. Um, let's see. She lives in Arizona. She teaches high school English. I love high school English teachers, so good on her. Um, and she's written a lot. And she is apparently a bestseller. Um, this is published through Simon Teen. But I feel nothing. And partway through reading the program and the treatment, 
um, I was like, she's doing all telling and no showing. Like, oh, I should have marked pages to share examples. But she'll say things like, oh, it was this sucking hole. But I don't know how the sucking hole felt, right? Yes, I've had grief in my own life and I've been frustrated and discouraged and despair and oh my gosh, I can't handle the world anymore. But she's not showing you in these books. It's all just, oh, I felt like my world was breaking apart. Well, how did it feel for your world to be breaking apart, right? I need feeling. I want her to talk about how, like when she was dizzy or the shortness of breath, it didn't talk about the like, pain that causes in your chest when you can't breathe appropriately and how you literally need to curl up to protect yourself because you can't function. You know, there wasn't enough. She'd have one phrase, but that's not enough to make the reader experience what the protagonist exper is experiencing at that moment. You can't do one phrase. Also, I felt like it was literally, well, of course it was a roller coaster of a book. It's about suicidal teens and them running away from the program that wants to reset them. You know, it's a roller coaster, but the same peaks and valleys, I phrased that weird, the peaks and valleys were the same every time. James loves me, now he's mad at me. James loves me, now he's mad at me. James loves me, now he's mad at me. The program almost has us, but we got away. Or I guess that should have been the opposite. The program almost has us, we got away. Oh, again, almost has us, got away. It was just this repetition of events. And then once we got to the climax, I was like, finally, something different is happening. Um, Part of me feels a little bit bad saying this because obviously Suzanne Young is doing great for herself and her books are selling and people like them. I could not. It was just... <clears throat> um, Kevin. This was an example that I did want to talk about. So Kevin is her handler after Sloan is released from the program and turns out he's on her side. He's friends with Realm, blah, blah, blah. And then when Kevin disappears and is off the grid and then later she found, finds out he's dead, she's like, oh, my friend Kevin, my friend Kevin. They weren't friends. Or at least that was not written well in these books. He's her handler. He does confine in her. He does help her a little bit, but there was not enough for them to be friends. She knows literally nothing about him besides the fact that his name is Kevin, that he knows Realm, and that he's going to try to help her like succeed at life and Realm's gonna find her. That's literally all he says. And then when he's dead, she can't handle it anymore. And she spirals and the depression comes back and it's sinking in and James has to save her. What? Like, sure, I understand that someone who was in your life basically being killed by the program would be very upsetting, but her reaction was not in accordance to the relationship we ha she had with that individual. Her reaction to Lacey, awesome. Her reaction to Dallas, spot on. Kevin? No. Not even close. She would not be having such a severe reaction to the point where the depression is sinking back in when she didn't even have a real relationship with Kevin. And honestly, I think that if it was me, Kevin would have been so obnoxious. Like, yes, it's horrible that they get rid of him because that's horrible to anybody. No authority figures should be able, like, should do that sort of thing, right? That's just wrong. But her reaction didn't connect. And again, it's back to the writing. There's not that emotion. There's not that building. It was all just kind of flat. Um, I don't care about Sloane. She's kind of this whiny, obnoxious person. I care about Realm more than I care about Sloan, and that's a problem. I'd rather read Realm's story about how he was in the program, and then he becomes this undercover person for the program, and then he turns his back on the program. That sounds way more interesting to me than Sloan's story turned out to be. Um, there you go. <laughs> I just went on this really negative rant and I hate being negative and so that was really hard. And again, I feel bad because I'm sure there are lots of people out there who really love these books because clearly, like I said, they're selling well and Suzanne Young is a best-selling author, I think. Maybe I actually completely made that up. I don't know. Jay Asher thinks she's cool. He's quoted on the program. <laughs> Maybe she paid him. I have no idea. Not impressed. And the fact that I didn't just read the program and the treatment, but I also read Hotel Ruby and I have the same issues with both makes me think that I don't need to read her stuff anymore. Except there is the aspect of authors typically improve the longer they've been writing. And so like their later published things are often better. 
Um, like, for example, you can see J.K. Rowling's writing improve from book one to book seven. That is so blatantly obvious, and it's fascinating to watch, because she was really good at the beginning, but she is fantastically brilliant by the time you get to the end. She is amazing. Um, anyway, we're not comparing the treatment, or I mean, the program and Harry Potter, two completely separate things, not enough overlap to even start comparing. I'm just saying... Maybe Suzanne Young will improve, and maybe I will like her later on when she publishes more things and writes for longer. Um, maybe she just needs a better editing friend? A better writing group? I don't really know, but I feel nothing for Sloane, which is really sad. Um, tangent. Drew Barrymore has a tendency to cry in every movie she's in. And I'm sure that they use her because she can cry well. Um, and again, that's a director thing. Who's telling her to cry? But it drives me nuts. And for that reason, I don't really like Drew Barrymore. Sloane was a Drew Barrymore. Crying all the time. And they go through so much of the beginning of the book, the program, talking about how they can't cry because then people will think they're depressed and so they only cry. Sloane and James only cry together. Blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly, as soon as, like, other things happen, Sloane is crying at, like... The drop of a hat. That's a dumb phrase. Sloan is just crying all the time. And I was like, what happened to the toughness of not letting people see you cry? And now you're just breaking down. Drew Barrymore, guys. She's a novel version of Drew Barrymore. I don't know. Didn't like it. Thumbs down. Not impressed. Could have been interesting. Um... But also with the science behind it, because suicide has become an epidemic and is contagious. Nope, I need more behind it than just claiming that it's contagious. Um, the doctors and scientists in the novels don't have a solution, and I'm not sure that Suzanne Young did either. Kind of feel that way about Maze Runner. Feel like there were a lot of questions brought up that the author wasn't quite sure about either. Don't do that. You need to know where you're coming from or be good enough at faking it. Because I don't need scientific terms from Suzanne Young to believe it, but I need her to have the characters in the story have a reasoning. Oh, there's this new thing that, like, I don't know, something exploded in the atmosphere and now suddenly teens are suicidal and, like, some alien book that I had to read once in college. That's, like, the premise behind that. I don't remember what it was, though. Anyway, she needs to give some reason for why suicide is an epidemic. You can't just the entire book be like, oh, we don't know, we don't know. Maybe, I'm not even sure if her other books are still the same storyline because it felt like in the treatment that it wrapped up, I don't know, maybe they keep going and maybe then there's answers. But like I said, I am not impressed enough with her writing to continue reading. Sorry, Suzanne Young, I feel bad. Um, I'd like to talk to her. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> anyway, not impressed. So either read them and then like, let's have a conversation. Cause I would think that was really cool. Especially if you liked them. I'd love to talk to you and like, see if you were able to connect to Sloan and if you felt the emotion, I'd love to have a conversation about that. I think that'd be really cool. Um, so either read them and let's chat or don't read them. Cause it, nothing. It's just flat. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, read other things. Keep reading.